Hey guys, so it's been seven months since I got my MacBook Air M1. Holy cow, it's already been seven months. And since then, I have come to terms with the fact that it's not my videos on architecture or creativity or portfolio tips or presentation tips, but it's actually my friggin' MacBook review that you guys seem to like the most. You know what? That is okay with me. But if you're here and you haven't checked out any of my other videos, I have a whole world of fun videos on architecture and the design process that are much more interesting than this. If you haven't checked it out, please do. A laptop is a tool after all. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about my thoughts on the M1 so far after using it for seven months. Some of the things that I like, some things that I don't like. As you probably know, when the M1 first came out, a lot of the architecture softwares were not compatible yet, but we will go through the softwares today and I'll show you which ones work and which ones don't work so well. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dami and I am a licensed architect in beautiful Vancouver, BC. On this channel, we talk about architecture and design and also some tools and strategies that can help us have more meaningful and fulfilling careers in architecture. And today we will be talking about the MacBook Air. I use my M1 mostly for my personal architecture projects, which are a lot smaller than the work that I do in my office. And I also use it for my YouTube channel. So uh, researching, writing, editing, and all that jazz. And for general browsing and online shopping. For those uses, I absolutely love the M1. I love how lightweight it is and the 15 hour battery life, like that is such a treat. I can kind of take it around and not really have to worry about it dying or like looking for a plug. It's kind of exactly as it's promoted. It's silent, it doesn't have a fan. So even when I'm running some heavy duty rendering programs, it's not making any sound, especially when I'm doing video recording or voice recording, it's really great because you don't hear the sound of the computer at all. And in fact, that's what I'm doing right now. Also, you can download any iOS app on the computer, which is pretty cool. I do have a separate Dell laptop that's provided by my office, um, which is what I use for my bigger work projects. In the past seven or so months, a lot of apps have become compatible with the M1, but they're still quite a few apps that are not. A lot of these apps still rely on Rosetta for compatibility. And I think it will take another couple of months, if not a couple more years for all the apps to be fully optimized for Apple Silicon. So there's a lot of debate on whether Apple is gonna start becoming more popular in the architecture industry, but just based on my personal experience, um, all the firms that I've worked at, we've always used PC. And I think that's just because a lot of the architecture softwares are designed and optimized for PC. I think it'll be very, very, very unlikely for a company to take on the task of switching to Mac OS just because that's a huge amount of time and energy. I don't really see that happening unless we're 150% sure that all of the softwares are gonna be compatible. When you're working and you're doing renderings or anything that requires a lot of processing power, you will want to connect your M1 to a power source because things like that will drain the uh, battery a little bit faster. And so what that means is that you're gonna have only one USB-C port left if you wanna connect to another hard drive or another device. I've purchased a USB-C hub so you can have a couple more ports for connecting to multiple devices, including regular size type A ports. Some of the hubs also come with a SD card reader and also an ethernet port. Some of the USB-C hubs come with a USB-C port 
that will let you charge your laptop at the same time. So that leaves your laptop with one free USB-C port that you can use to connect to another device. Before you buy your adapter, just make sure, double check that it's compatible with the M1. I've had problems with adapters. I will leave the links to the adapters that I'm using down in the description, but just please make sure after you purchase that it works with your computer. And if it doesn't, just uh, take advantage of Amazon's amazing return policy and <laughs> return it. If you are someone who likes to use the screen and a second monitor and a third monitor, you are out of luck because it seems like the M1 so far only lets you connect to one extra monitor. There are some workarounds to this problem if you really, really need to have your third screen, which is you can buy a display link docking station, which will let you have multiple monitors. Um, but this is a pricey solution, kind of up to your discretion, whether that's a worthwhile investment for you or not. One of the most annoying things that I found is that Mac OS still in 2021 doesn't fully support the NTFS file system. So for hard drives that are formatted in NTFS, you can still read it, but you can't write on it. So if you want to use the NTFS file system, because maybe you have a lot of hard drives that you use on a daily basis that's already formatted in NTFS, there's two things you can do. You can Format your drive in the XFAT file system that's cross compatible between Windows and Mac. But if you can't do that, you can use a software that lets you do that. For example, the one that I'm using is NTFS for Mac. I'll leave the link to that below. You can format the drive inside Mac OS, but you will face the same problem if you want to connect that drive to a Windows platform. That's going to be problematic if you're working with someone who's using a PC, you need to share the files. In most cases, that drive won't even show up on your colleague's computer. That's just gonna add a huge amount of friction to your workflow. So it's something you really need to be very careful about. So something you have to put in the budget when you're buying an M1 is a good Type-C hub and possibly a NTFS for Mac. Okay, so now I'm just gonna switch over to the architecture softwares and show you which ones are compatible and which ones are not. I know guys, this is not like a scientific, technically based review, but you can find all of the technical data elsewhere um, much better than I can provide. I just wanted to show you a review based on my experience of using these softwares. Okay, so let's first try SketchUp. SketchUp, I have used on this computer quite a bit and it works perfectly. It doesn't really seem to have any glitches, but I will just show you. Yeah, so this is a 173 megabyte file, pretty, pretty big file, but it runs fairly smoothly don't really have any problems with it. Yeah, so um, this is actually a fairly complex file. Um, I have a lot of blocks and lots of different polygons and I have texture maps on the surfaces. I have um, these plant geometries it runs pretty similar to my uh, desktop PC, but you can see that there is a little bit of a lag when this is in real time. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of a lag um, with the texture mapping. So I have a texture applied on this surface and on the ground, but when I pan around, the texture kind of disappears and it takes a couple of seconds for it to reappear. There we go. Okay, so let's go to Rhino. And so Rhino, I recently updated to their new version. 
um, which seems to work quite well. The previous version had some problems. Um, I would pan around the model and uh, within a couple of seconds it would have an error and it would just crash. And so it seems like they have solved that issue. And I'll just show you a heavier file um, if there's any lags. So this one is a 270 megabyte file. And when I was using my um, heavy duty gamer desktop in the CAD lab, this file was lagging significantly, but um, on this, it's running very, very smoothly. And I'm very happy about that. Yeah, really no issues kind of panning around. So yeah, with the renderings, typically with my workflow, I don't really do renders with my work computer. I do do um, like video renderings, um, but with architectural renderings, I usually do it in my work desktop. So I haven't really tried it on this computer, but probably for my next video, just because there has been quite a lot of requests about testing the um, rendering abilities on this computer, I will probably test out um, Enscape, Twinmotion, and V-Ray on this computer. Um, if you guys want me to test out any other rendering software, just let me know. So Vectorworks does seem like it's been optimized to run on the M1. I haven't really found any issues so far, just panning around it. Okay, so now let's try Archicad. Um, I have downloaded a couple of their models, uh, their sample projects from their website, and they had a pretty good variety of models of different sizes. They had ones from 340 megabytes to uh, 660 megabytes. So uh, why don't we try opening up the small one first? Yeah, here is the AXO of the model. So yeah, this is, yeah, I've actually never used ArchiCAD before um, I got my M1 and I've just been playing around with it recently and I really like it. Um, it's actually quite a lot, like the interface is quite a lot nicer than Revit. Revit has this very like construction document-y look to it. Um, but I find that ArchiCAD just produces nicer looking, cleaner looking drawings. And the 3D is much, much, much smoother to pan around and walk around. So I do, I do quite like that a lot. Um, yeah, for example, just moving around the model like this in Revit, um, it, I, I, it, it would take me a little longer for the model to load as I, walk around and in Revit it's more like um, like I typically just set up the views for the areas that I want to look at and then I um, click from one view to another um, and I rarely kind of pan around the model like this. Um, if I wanted to do something like this I would open up Enscape and um, kind of move around the model like that but yeah I just really like how um, smooth the 3D views of ArchiCAD is. Yeah, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Okay, and then let's do AutoCAD. AutoCAD is a industry standard and most firms use AutoCAD on a daily basis. Um, I have heard of people saying that they were having um, problems accessing the toolbox but I have not experienced that in my computer. It does seem to run quite smoothly. Um, and I mean, AutoCAD has always had a um, Mac version. And so I don't think that compatibility with M1 was too um, difficult of a transition. 
but yeah there and also AutoCAD is a much simpler a much lighter software than um, something like Revit or ArchiCAD so okay so now let's move on to Revit which for me is the critical software. Um, Revit is the tool that I've used in all of my years uh, working in architecture. All the firms that I've worked at has used Revit. So Revit does not run natively on the Mac OS. So you do have to run uh, parallel software. Some of you may have heard, um, they just recently introduced parallel um, a couple months ago. You can open up a parallel PC desktop on the M1. And so I went ahead and downloaded Revit 2022. And there we go. A crash error report. The software has caused Revit 2022 to close unexpectedly. We apologize for the inconvenience. Oh, up, oh, up. Uh. An unrecoverable error has occurred. The program will now be terminated. All of your data has been recently saved, so there's no blah, 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 blah. So this has been happening consistently every single time I try to open Revit on Parallels. And so my take on this is that Revit actually doesn't work on the M1. I haven't really found any resources online to explain why this is happening, but I will report back and um, let you guys know if there are any updates to this. But so far, it seems like Revit does not work on the M1, which is a shame. So that was the end of the video. I hope you guys found that fairly helpful. I definitely love using this laptop, but it is my secondary laptop. I have my PC as my primary laptop for doing all my architecture work. This I reserve for doing my YouTube videos, my editing, and more of my general use. Would I recommend this as a primary laptop if you're an architect? Probably not because it's not ready. As you saw, Revit did not function properly on this computer. But if you are someone who doesn't use Revit at all, if you are someone who doesn't think that you will ever work for a firm that will use Revit, then yeah, it could be a great option for you. Everything that I talked about in this video, you should definitely take into consideration before making this investment. With all that being said, that's kind of it. I will follow up in the next video um, where I test out some of the rendering softwares on this computer. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Check out some of my other videos. I have videos on architecture and design and the design process that could be a little bit more interesting than this one. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.